throw back a classic Baker's Boy cap with a trendy twist. This Baker's Boy cap features a soft short brim with a bobble accent to mimic a strap. The sides and back of the brim are ribbed vertically while the horizontal bands feature a series of eyelets in a unique textured lacy look. The top even has a double decrease to keep it nice and flat. This pattern and video are brought to you by KB Looms. Let's knit along the entire pattern today here on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This is a new pattern from myself, Kristen Mangus at Good Knit Kisses, and I'm thankful for partnering with KB Looms to bring you this free pattern today. This can be found on our blog, so click down in the link in the description below to get your copy. You'll also need your loom and yarn, and we'll get right into that. Be sure and grab two stitch markers as well. All right, let's find out what looms and yarns you need, and we will start this knit along together. We're gonna work from the visor all the way to the crown in this tutorial today. This pattern features two of the looms found in KB Looms round loom set, the large gauge with 5 8 gauge. We're using the 48 peg loom and the 24 peg loom. Thank you so much to KB Looms. For yarn, you're going to need a super bulky number six weight yarn, about 87 yards. Today's yarn is provided by Premier. This is Everyday Bulky in color turquoise. We used about one ball. Thank you so much to Premier. Click down on the link in the description below to get yours. We're going to begin by working our visor first with a chain cast on, and we need to set aside our 24 peg loom and our loom hook. And we do need a crochet hook. You can use your fingers or a hook. I'm using a USL or eight millimeter hook. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my stitch markers just to show where um, the first 16 pegs are we're gonna use. It, it doesn't matter where on the loom they fall. And I'm just marking them. I've already kind of pre-measured out where these are or counted them. And we're going to start by making a slip knot. Of course, go ahead and chain cast on if you've done that already before. And I'm going to show you now, if you haven't, go ahead and put your hook in there and make sure I'd have it a little bit loose. You don't need it very tight for this. We're going to go to the inside of the loom, pick it up, and put your working yarn in between two pegs. It's going to be in the outside of where that stitch marker is. And we're going to go around it, so in between the next two pegs, and yarn over. And then we're going to pull on through, through that chain there. And see how I'm actually holding on to the tail back here? Or you can hold it back here and then that way it doesn't um, swing around on you to the other side. So you're just going to continue going on to the next peg and yarn over and pull through those loops on the back. So you get two loops back here and one in the front. And actually now that I've already put that on, I'm going to take this stitch marker off so that I don't confuse myself because I actually need that later. Just keep going until you get all 16 stitches cast on. And when you get to the one with this uh, stitch marker, you're just going to take the stitch marker off and place that loop on there. That's just the single loop on there. So I am going fast, but I want to let you know, you just need to pause your video as you need and uh, slow it down if you need, use the controls to your advantage, fast forward, rewind, whatever you need to do uh, for your own pace, because I am gonna go through all the techniques in this video. So let's continue going. And I've got one more to do. Okay. And then I'm going to place it before I do just take this stitch marker off and set it aside. And then we're just going to place it right there. And you're ready for row one. The beginning of most of the rows on our flat panel is going to be slipped or skipped. So we're going to ignore this first stitch here, the first peg, and our knit row is going to be E-wrap in this pattern. So we're just going to E-wrap around these 15 stitches. And knit those over. Pause your video, I'll meet you back up for row two. See you in a moment. Row two, we're going to be working in a flat panel in the opposite direction purling and you're going to slip the first stitch but you're going to begin your purl row with an e-wrap and end it with an e-wrap so the second peg and the 16th peg are e-wrap so just go ahead and wrap that around now and to purl you're just going to put the working yarn below that loop on the peg and scoop up a loop 
and take it off and put it on and cinch that up. We're going to go to the next one and scoop up the next one, take it off and put it on. And that is the purl stitch. So continue doing that. And the last loop, be sure and e-wrap it. Pause your video and I will meet you up for the third row, which is our increase row. See you soon. I'm finishing row two and e-wrap that last stitch and knit over this e-wrap down here. And now we're going to move to row three, which has a beginning start of a HH or half hitch. So instead of ignoring this first one slipping, we're actually going to work in the opposite direction just for a moment. This is a thumb cast on the half hitch. So you actually pull your yarn out here and you're going to twist it around with your thumb and make the working yarn come down below instead of an E-wrap where the working yarn comes out above. And so we just cinch it up and pull on it. So it's like an upside down E-wrap stitch. And now you can go on to the remainder of your row in the opposite direction here. So the same way you would have been working, of course, you're going to E-wrap these remaining stitches all the way down. Okay, so until you get to the very last one. And this is going to add two stitches onto this particular row by making another half hitch on the end here. So we're just going to take our yarn and flip it to be uh, underneath. So if we were going to e-wrap, watch this. So if we e-wrapped, we went like this and the yarn is coming out the top. But if we want to flip it, we just do this and turn it upside down. See that? And so it can be locked in position like that. All right, so then you're just going to knit over, work these stitches here for this row. Pause your video and I'll meet you back up for the next row. See you soon. All right, row four is another purl row and it's worked exactly like row two where you slip the first stitch, e-wrap the next, and then purl until one stitch remains and then you e-wrap that one. So, as you've noticed, you have an odd row that has an e-wrap with two half inch increases on the ends followed by a purl row. So you're gonna continue alternating these two rows until you get to the end of row 10, which is another purl, uh, another purl row. So I'll meet you back at the end of row 10 on this side over here. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. I'm actually finishing two rows at the same time, uh, back to where I said that I would meet you, but I wanna show you this quick uh, knit solution for doing two rows at once. If you wrap your e-wrap row first and then you uh, knit off a few stitches, you can then begin your return for the purl row. So I e-wrapped this stitch here and then I went on to my purl stitch and I'm gonna continue on purling and then I'll lift over a few of these e-wrap stitches and continue purling. So anyway, I just wanna give you that little tip if you've never seen that before. Pause your video and I will meet you, of course, at the end of row 10. See you soon. All right, so we've finished increasing our visor. This is what it's going to look like on the right side here. We've got this tail, we'll work that in in a few minutes. Uh, we want to connect in the round and then reinforce this brim to begin the hat. It makes it stick out this direction, okay? So you're gonna pick up our crochet hook and we're going to lift up this last stitch here and just hold it and take your stitch marker and place it on that peg that you just took it off of, okay? So this is after you've made that E-wrap stitch on your previous round, or row 12. So now that we've placed our marker here, this is now peg one. And so we're going to use this loop here and chain cast on from peg one all the way around the loom. Okay, so we're going to continue going. So this is peg one here. All right, and now we're going through two and three and four and just continue. And when we get to uh, peg 25, pause your video and meet me back up. We'll be on the other side here. All right, see you in one moment. All right, so I've finished to peg 25. I'm at peg 26, and now we're going to continue again. And you will, yes, in fact, have two loops on that peg, and you're going to continue around until you get to peg one. 
and then you'll put that extra loop on top of the one with the stitch marker over here. This is peg one. So continue going around and pause your video. I will meet you soon. Okay, so after you have got double loops on uh, half of these pegs, really, you're going to be lifting them up and over to knit off. And that's all we're doing for this step before we move on to the hat brim and body. And I like to, when I'm making these visor hats, it's kind of nice to go ahead and finish off my brim and not leave this dangling yarn tail here. So uh, after you finish knitting this off, I'm going to show you how to weave in that tail. And then you'll know how to also weave in a garter stitch and hide that. So uh, pause your video, meet me back up for weaving in the tail, and we'll move on to the remainder of our hat. Pause your video, and I will see you soon. All right, so you can see I've already got my needle in here, and I'm just showing it with this orange needle so you can really see my stitches. I've got my yarn tail threaded through my needle, and then I want to take this tail up through the back of my stitches until I can reach kind of halfway up in here, about at least an inch in or so. And then I'm leading my, um, I'm leading this needle all the way up till I see this little rounded part right here. This is, this is going up and around and then down. I'm actually going to go around, I'm gonna call this a little umbrella here, this little part right here. And then I'm actually going to pull it up all the way and then lead it back down and underneath kind of this little smile area here. So it's gonna smile and then we're gonna go back up and go around and down. Kind of like if you've ever seen that old fashioned candy that does that. So I just wanted you to see that I'm weaving it right up here. And I kind of guide that in and then it'll guide in that slip knot there. If you need to tighten the slip knot before you start, you can do that. And don't pull it too tight so that it cinches it in too much because you still want this uh, nice neat edge here. So now what I'm doing is I'm just following along the, around this little umbrella, so to speak, just because it's got that shape. So we're going to go around that, okay, and then down through this bump here, okay, down here, and we're going to go around this little shape here. So we're going to go down through these stitches, okay, so it follows that stitch around, and then we're going to go around this little smile part, go up here and then back up through, zigzagging back, so we can go around that little umbrella again. So that's it. It's kind of fun to do this um, at a knit, <laughs> knit time with friends uh, when you maybe you've got something that you normally concentrate a lot on. You can use this time to weave in your tails to something a little more complicated that you hate doing by yourself. So anyway, that's it's kind of fun to um, do your yarn tails that way. So anyway, once you've uh, got several stitches in, uh, then you can just um, go ahead and cut your yarn. Uh, I'm going to cut this uh, tail up um, kind of up here. And so that little part that might get cut um, will hide further up into the brim. Oops. And just cut that. And so that tail is nice and well hidden. And now you can complete the remainder of your hat. Okay, so we're moving on to the hat brim and body, and I am going to be working in this direction. If you're seeing this on the right-handed video, I'm going in the clockwise direction, and on the left-handed video, you're going to be seeing it go in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, so I'm going to go this direction here, and we're going to begin by e-wrapping one and purling one. Okay, so we're going to e-wrap one and purl one beginning on peg one, which has this stitch marker here. Okay, so we're gonna do that until we get to um, peg 27 and we're gonna place a marker and then we're gonna purl for the remainder of the row. So we're making a rib section starting here and working all the way around until you get to this point and then we are going to purl all of these stitches. So that's how the pattern reads. So go ahead and do that now. When you get to the um, when you get to the peg for 27, this is where you'll use your second stitch marker and you'll place that. Pause your video. I'll meet you at the end of round one, which is what we're going to complete now. See you soon. All right, so I purled my last stitch, and just to remind you, you've got your stitch marker at peg 27, which is where we started uh, all of our purling. 
And now we're going to be on an EREP row for the brim. Now when I say EREP row, I mean the EREP is actually going to be in the front of this visor area and the back part is going to be the one by one ribbing. So you're gonna continue with uh, knit one. So that's that EREP. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit off my stitch and then EREP. So it actually tells me which one is an EREP and which is a purl because I didn't knit that off before. So I've got an EREP one and purl one. And then when I get uh, over to my stitch marker, I'm going to continue by e-wrapping the remainder of those pegs. Pause your video and I'll meet you back up for round three. All even rows uh, for the next three times we do the even rows are all going to be the same. So I'm just gonna go over with you on the odd rows. So I'll see you at round three for making bobbles. See you soon. All right, so I am on the start of round three and I've done my e-wrap row previous to that. We are going to knit one, purl one, or e-wrap one, purl one, all the way until the stitch marker over on the other side. And this is where we're going to make our bobbles. So go ahead and uh, work your way all the way from peg one to peg 27, where that stitch marker is, and we will make the first bobble together. See you soon. All right, so we're going to make a bobble and I want to go over what this looks like on your pattern because I'm gonna show you the bobble and show you a trick how to make a row go a little bit faster and you can see it easier. Uh, but I'm gonna explain what it looks like here. So this is the start of what I'm calling a band. It looks like an accent or something. Okay, so your peg 27 is right here. You're actually going to be e-wrapping this stitch first on this round and then you make a bobble and then you e-wrap and make a bobble and every so uh, every other one is making a bobble and then you quit by the time you reach uh, around to peg one so it's just where this visor is then we will work an e-wrap row where the front part is e-wrap just like we did before and then we'll make bobbles but we're shifting it over and then the first stitch here on this peg 27 is a making a bobble so you'll know everything you need to know from round three and um, round four you already know because it's just like round two. So let's make a bobble. I'm gonna teach you how to make this row a little bit quicker and you can see it easier. Okay, so we're gonna begin by um, working this stitch over here that's from that previous round and I'm gonna get these stitches all knit over. Okay, and then uh, you are going to start by e-wrapping your first peg Okay, to get it set up. And again, if you're using this part again for um, two rounds away, which is round uh, five, you're going to be putting the bobble first instead of second. So now that I've got this peg e-wrapped, I'm gonna go uh, over here and I'm gonna make a bobble here. So I'm going to e-wrap this one and knit it over and do it five times in a row and it's gonna make a long little panel in the back. So before I do that, I'm gonna turn this over and I wanna show you what this row looks like before we do it around, we do it. You see this stitch right behind here, okay? Right here is the previous round, okay? This is what we're gonna be picking up later on. So you need to identify what this little pearl bump looks like on this side. it's It was actually a knit stitch before, but on the back, it's a purl bump. So now that you can identify what it is, let's begin making our bobble. So we're going to e-wrap and knit over one, wrap it, knit over two, three, four, And five. By the time you, I get down to five, you can see I'm having to push it down because it's just collecting a lot of um, yarn here in the back. So you have this extra amount of yarn. And so what we normally do for one bobble is you're going to go back here and you're going to lift up that little stitch that we were messing with before and it gets picked up and put back onto the loom and then you knit it. Lift up and over. And that's making one bobble. However, I have discovered if you'll go ahead and e-wrap this peg and then go ahead and make a bobble here before lifting up and over and do 
all of your bobbles on the row, then you can come back through and lift up and over a little easier. And you can actually just lift over, put it there, lift over, put it there, lift over, put it there, and then come back through and then knit over your stitches and lock them in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll do another bobble with you. So E wrap, knit over one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to E wrap the next stitch. Make a bobble the next one. One. That first one's a little tight. Two. Three. Four. And five. Okay. And I'm not going to go on to the rest of this, but you can see how this happens. So when you go to the back here, then you can see this stitch kind of hanging out here. And then we can just take it and pick it up, make sure you grab all the strands, and lift up and over and put it on here, and come down to the next bobble down here. And you find that strand, that, that pearl bump, and you place it onto your peg, and come down to this next one. You can pull back on your work if you're not sure which one it is. And I actually had already locked that one in, so I don't need to do that one. So now these bobbles have been ready and then been made, so I can lift those up and over. And if you see your work is um, kind of falling to the back here, you can just tuck it back in. And the bobble will poke out the other side, I promise. <laughs> so they'll all start looking like this after you uh, have knit several rows down and you can see them. So continue making your bobble and e-wrapping in between. And I will meet you back at the end of this section. This is a hat, uh, brim, and body. And uh, we will meet back up at round eight. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. I just want to show you what this looks like after completing a round three and then a round four. You can see the bobble is sticking out and then we do have that E-wrap round right behind it. So don't forget round four after you've made round three. So now when you move on to round five, you're going to be shifting those bobble stitches over for this offset look. So continue in pattern, pause your video, and I will meet you back up at round eight. See you soon. All right, so we're ready for round eight. You should have three rounds of bobbles that appear. Of course, they've got the E-wrap rows in between. And go ahead and knit over all of the leftover E-wrap knits from the ribbed part of the brim. And then, um, so round eight, all you're gonna be doing is pushing your stitches down and E-wrapping all the way around for your last row and that completes, or your last round, that completes this brim and accent part here. And then we'll move on to the body of the hat. Pause your video when you're ready and I'll see you soon. The next five rounds are going to make up one of these bands and then the space in between. And we're actually going to make three of these bands. Now, if you want to, you can add an extra length uh, and for a no more height on this band. Say if you've got really big hair and you wanna make it kind of more of a stove top type hat. I don't have that in the pattern, but you can repeat those. So starting at round nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, that is the beginning of the five sets. And then they'll be repeated in the sequential rounds after. So round nine, you're going to make it a purl row, but you can set it up for the next row by doing this. So you're going to purl one, okay, and then purl the second, and then put it on the purl before. So you leave this peg empty here. Then move on to the next one, just skipping this peg, purl one, and then purl the next one, and then place it on that peg before. And so you're just stacking them. The round after, we're going to be purling two together. It doesn't matter that they're leaning right or leaning left, it's just that we're putting the two purls together. So continue on, purling this entire row and stacking two on top of each other. Pause your video and I'll see you when you're ready. 
All right, we're gonna cover rounds 10 through 13 here. So round 10, this is actually our decrease and increase row. It, it remains the same stitch count, but what happens is, uh, first of all, you're, um, you're gonna skip this stitch right before your peg here, so go in the back of that, and you're gonna work these two stitches together, purling them. So we're going to purl two together, okay? And then on that empty peg, we're going to yarn over. This is an E-wrap yarn over. So just wrap around and yarn over and then move on. So you repeat that where you purl two together and then yarn over, okay? You're just gonna continue that throughout the round. And then on rounds 11 through 13, so that's the next three rounds, you're going to do an E-wrap, okay? So do three E-wrap rounds after you do this one. And then you will repeat that sequence two more times. So you'll um, follow your written pattern, be sure. And if you haven't gotten it yet, you got to go get that pattern. Click on the link in the description below and you'll finish out all the way till the end of round 23. I'll meet you back for round 24. Pause your video and I will see you at that time. See you soon. We are at round 24 and you're going to want to purl all 48 stitches. And once you complete the round of purl, we're actually going to do a row of regular knit stitches. So no more E-wrap from here on out. We're actually going to, um, either you can do a U-wrap knit where it goes around the peg entirely and it makes kind of a U formation and then we lift up and over and then uh, pull on your working yarn a little bit to make it a little bit loose so that you're not pulling too tight when you go to the next one and do the same thing. If you uh, usually, uh, you wrap knit too tight and you know that, you can do a reverse purl or traditional knit stitch where you put the yarn, working yarn above the loop, so opposite like when you're gonna purl, and then you pull a new loop downward and then take that off and put it on and that helps you uh, remain and uh, maintain a um, a nice tension here without having too uh, too tight. So continue around. You're going to do a purl row and a standard knit row. All right. Pause your video and I'll see you then at the end to work on the crown. See you soon. So we're going to divide our peg count for the crown into eight quadrants. So imagine a piece of pizza and we're just cutting it up. Uh, several times to uh, eight sections and it's going to be six pegs in each section so an easy way to do that is to take some stitch markers or rubber bands or you can just kind of remember where it is when you just count every time so we're going to count off one two three four five six and then that's the first section and then the next section starts so I'm gonna put on a few pegs these right here just to show you what I'm talking about so peg one here and then two, three, four, five, six, and then we go to the seventh peg, which begins our next one peg, <laughs> and then we move down and we mark our loom here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So you continue marking your loom, and uh, pause your video, meet me back up when you're ready, and we'll start moving some stitches over for this crown. For the crown round one, we're going to take the number two peg and put it on top of the one peg, and we'll do that in each section all the way around. So you grab the second peg in and move it over to the one with the stitch marker on it. And just continue going all the way around your loom. And then once you've done that for all of them, then you'll start working the stitches uh, just like you did before with, an, uh, with a U-wrap knit. But the ones that have two pegs, you're gonna lift two over one to have one loop remaining. And then if you've got an empty peg, you're just gonna go behind that with your working yarn and go on to the next one. And you're going to U-wrap knit that. Okay, so knit that and then continue on. So go to uh, all pegs that have wraps on them and work them over, leaving the working yarn in the back, um, slipping this empty peg. All right, pause your video and I'll meet you back up when you're ready for round two. See you soon. Okay, so we have come to the end of round one. We're now on round two, and we're going to take the fourth peg in your section and put it on top of the third peg. And then you're just going to repeat that in each section and then uh, knit that entire row just as you did round one, skipping all of the empty pegs. All right, so continue to do that and uh, pause your video, and I will meet you back in a moment on round three. 
See you soon. All right, so we are going to go on to the next part where we are moving the six peg over to the five in our section. So same as before, just lifting that peg up and putting it over onto the other peg and then working a knit round there. So go ahead and do that. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. I want to interrupt with a little tip. If you find that moving your last five peg or six peg over to five, if it's too tight, and you could have done this on the other rounds too, if it's if it's too tight to move, you can actually work that stitch that you're going to move first. So go ahead and actually lift up and over and then place that on the peg that you were um, going to move it to and then lift up and over. And so the stitch has actually worked the same way. It's just that it gives it a little bit of uh, relief on this peg here. All right, continue working and we'll see you in a moment. All right, so we're ready to actually do our second decrease and we're gonna be moving all the stitches over to this 24 peg looms. So you have now reduced from 48 pegs to 24 and we want to gri grab some scrap yarn, uh, just a nice contrasting yarn that's smooth. It's not gonna be grabbing on you. Usually an acrylic will work really well for this. And you want to um, go into your first stitch and pull through your yarn and then you go all the way around your loom, pulling the yarn up and through, just consistently the same way with each stitch so that you know how to place them right back onto the next loom. So go ahead and do that and then take it off and then we'll be placing it onto this loom here. All right, pause your video and I'll see you soon. All right, so I'm gonna put my hat on the inside of this loom here and I'm doing this direction because I've got my working yarn coming out here. Otherwise, I could bring it the opposite way. I would have to just work that yarn up through the middle, the, the remaining ball. So just lay it gently in here and it's going to be obviously bigger than what will fit inside here. But you wanna lay, lay these live stitches up next to the pegs and find your first one. And I've got one here. I'm just gonna take my yarn and pull the loop out a little bit and just lay it right on one of these pegs, okay? And then just pull that yarn out. So I'm working with the tail side here. Grab the next one and pull on it and just pop it right on and pull it out. And then just continue going all the way around the loom. So it doesn't matter where you're putting it on here, just start somewhere and continue. Just make sure it's towards the end of where one of your scraps are so you don't pull it out. And then after you uh, continue going around the loom, these loops are going to be a bit loose so we can start kind of pulling on the slack from those and, um, and you'll actually work out a little bit of this looseness here. So pause your video, um, pull up the slack after you take these off the uh, scrap yarn and put them on the pegs and I'll see you in a moment. So I pulled out all the slack and you can see this is actually how much extra I had. So I'm just gonna pull it out this last stitch and uh, because the working yarn is coming from here, you know that the next stitch is the one that's the beginning. So go ahead and mark that. And you can actually divide this uh, loom into four sections of six now. So go ahead and mark your peg with the uh, stitch markers and count out to six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then pick this one up and then put your stitch marker on. So you can just take it from that other loom, place it, and you're ready. So go ahead and do one more round of, uh, of unit and uh, just don't decrease just yet. So we're gonna do one more round and uh, we'll meet you back up when you're done with that. See you soon. Okay, so we're ready to start dividing our loom again with moving stitches. So you're going to repeat as you've done before. We're going to move the two over to the one on all the sections and then do a round of knits, skipping the empty pegs. So you're going to complete that, then do another moving round from the four to the three, knit that, then go from the six to the five, and knit that round. And then you'll knit one more round again. So this is written all in your instructions, and uh, so you've got four more rounds, you're gonna have three decrease rounds in a row, and then one more where you're just just knitting all the pegs that have stitches on them. All right, uh, pause your video and I will see you when you get to that point. See you soon. To finish this off, you're just going to wrap around the loom one time and go ahead and cut. 
and then you're going to work in this tail through all of the stitches. I just continue in the direction that you've already been. So this is your last peg here. And so you're going to want to go through and go up, threading it through. You can use a needle, um, but I think it's easier just to use your, your pick here. All right, so go all the way around and we're going to pull that off and close the top together. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. All right, so I'm just going to pull this closed. I did go back through this last stitch twice. Uh, that way I could close these up. And we're going to go and just pull on our yarn. And it's going to close this up nice and tight. And before you get all the way there, uh, just go ahead and work this yarn into the center. And just turn it inside out. And then you can just finish closing it from there. I like to check it before I'm done. Just uh, just hold it here and look at the other side. And then look how pretty that closes up. Isn't that nice? It's nice and flat. You have these nice decreases here. And um, I actually want to show you, if you noticed on my other sample, um, it's a little more, a bit more open. I actually did use E-Wrap on this one. So you can see how using the uh, the unit wrap, the unit stitch is actually going to um, look a little bit flatter here. All right, so you're just going to continue uh, by weaving in the end of this tail. All right, so we just go through these stitches. One more time. All right, and then go through one last loop here and make a loop on the end and then go through that again. All right, and then you can now safely cut that and then this tail would just be tucked on the inside and because you already uh, wove this in uh, from the beginning here, it's already done and ready to wear. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed making your Baker's Boy cap. I know that I already enjoy using it. It is already fall here and I'm wearing it already. So I do want to point out that this yarn is anti-pilling. It's a special patented one from Premier Every Day. So it's not going to rub and fuzz out on you and it's perfect to use with these looms. Thank you again to KB Looms for providing the loom and the pattern tutorial for you today. Be sure and comment down below. Do you enjoy this? Would you like some more made on these looms? And subscribe if you haven't. Thanks again for joining us today and happy knitting and crochet and looming. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.